Considered a zero emission source of energy, the Middle East and North Africa is turning to nuclear power. But we're not talking about hot war or even nuclear Armageddon because regional or international mutually assured destruction puts pay to such claims. Instead, we're focusing on its peaceful civilian use, where it's proliferating regionally and how more can be done to address concerns by decoding MENA's nuclear options. In 2011, Iran's nuclear facility at Bushehr started feeding the national power grid. It was the first country in the region to use nuclear energy. German companies were helping Iran acquire that technology back in 1975, but the revolution and subsequent war with Iraq delayed the program for decades. That's until 1995, when a Russian company inked a deal to finally complete the complex. Iran is a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but it isn't to other international conventions. It's a point that we'll be addressing a little bit later on. And we should also mention that Iran's reactor at Bushehir is completely separate from its alleged weapons program that centers around other sites the U.S., Israel, and others believe make Iran non-compliant to the NPT agreement. Aside from the political debate, there's also a safety risk at the Bushehr site. While it is designed to withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake, it's situated in a seismic area that has already seen several magnitude 6 tremors over the course of its lifetime. Early in 2021, the United Arab Emirates flicked on its nuclear switch as a way to decrease its energy sector costs. But before agreeing to build the facility, the country went out of its way to assure the global community its reactors were strictly for civilian purposes. Abu Dhabi placed transparency at the center of its plans while also joining all relevant international conventions associated with responsible nuclear ownership. Currently, only Iran and the UAE produce electricity through nuclear reactors, but others have nuclear operations on the horizon. These countries have all signed their intent to go with nuclear energy. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey and Jordan are each pursuing the development of the power source. Turkey's strategic document, Vision 2023, outlined a decade ago, planned for three nuclear power plants in the country. In 2015, work began on the Akkuyu nuclear power plant in the south of the country, and it is expected to start operations in 2023. Conditions went against building a second nuclear reactor in the northern city of Sinop, and the project was canceled in early 2020. But Landworks will start again this year, according to local Turkish reports. The third one, Ina, the nuclear power plant, is due to start construction in 2023 and will be run by a domestic workforce using U.S. technology. Now, all these countries mentioned so far are signatories to the NPT treaty, except for one. How many of you know who this whistleblower is? Mr. Mordecai Vanunu was a low-level technician at Israel's Dimona nuclear research facility. And in 1986, he disclosed information and photos to a British newspaper about its existence. Confirming long-held Western suspicions Israel was going for nuclear weapons over nuclear power. And to this day, Israel still hides behind a policy of deliberate ambiguity surrounding its nuclear program. Remember earlier when we said we'd come back to Iran and the NPT? Well, this is the crux of the argument. Israel is not a signatory to the NPT, but is to these international conventions, while Iran is not. Turkey and the UAE are signatories to both these as well as the NPT. And this is one of the reasons for the regional mistrust of nuclear technology. Safety, transparency and accountability is the name of the game to be a responsible nuclear state. Uranium needs to be managed over its lifespan, even when it's removed from the reactor. Storing it safely and securely is a problem that lasts much longer than our lifetimes. Regional cooperation needs upgrading in this area if more countries develop more reactors. And of course, one of the offshoots of having a nuclear program is that it can lead to a weapons program, which is exactly why it is crucial for the region to address local concerns and for all nations undertaking a nuclear solution to sign up to all treaties so that everyone can be held accountable in the event of an accident or worse. Tell us what you think. Leave us your comments on our YouTube page. I'm Ali Janayanlar and you can reach me on Twitter.